alpine hiking and basic mountaineering, a series of lessons on the fundamentals of mountain travel. Our instructor for the course is Dick McGowan, young veteran of many major expeditions to the world's most challenging peaks. Now, here is Dick McGowan. This evening, we want to go on into rock climbing, one of the most enjoyable aspects of getting back up in the hill uh, country and enjoying some of the fine mountain scenery. Uh, alpine uh, rock climbing it comes in several different stages. Uh, usually classes of, oh, they call it one, two, three, four, five, and six class climbing. And we want to, in this session, go into uh, climbing uh, on up to the type of climbing where you'd be using a climbing rope. Our group, uh, we join up on the rock cliffs at a practice session, a full day out of practicing the various techniques of rock climbing. Uh, slowly moving on up the hillside to the practice area where we, we will spend most of the day. One of the enjoyable things, of course, is being out in a small group and uh, taking the opportunity to spend an entire day in practicing uh, these various techniques. It's very easy to read about these things in a textbook or uh, sit and discuss them, but until you actually get out in the field and practice these techniques, such as experienced climbers do each season, uh, you can never really learn them. We pick an area which is safe uh, for our practice, uh, where there uh, won't be too much exposure, so the group can uh, get on uh, up and do some easy climbing. The climbing rope, as we've mentioned before, is 120 foot, is the standard length of climbing rope. Uh, the general length is uh, 120 feet by 3 8 inch in diameter. We pick a good, easy place where we can start that isn't too steep, where climber won't feel too exposed up on the cliff. And we rope on in. The end men will rope in uh, using a bowline on a coil type of knot. Uh, several loops around the body, and then a bowline on a coil uh, knot is placed uh, here very securely, very tight, right beneath the belt so that the initial shock of any fall or any slip will be on the hips and not on the ribs. And then after the bowline on a coil knot is tied, uh, it's finished off with a little uh, half hitch so that it will be kept secure. It's important that uh, the knot is checked so that uh, these beginner, beginning climbers uh, know that uh, uh, they'll be okay in the event of a slip or a fall when they're practicing. The middle man on a rope, if you're using three men on a rope, will tie in uh, with a bowl and on a coil. Uh, generally in rock climbing, if you're going to be belaying, that is securing the movement of climbers as they move along, uh, you will only have two on a rope. That is, uh, climbers will be about 120 feet apart. Uh, in rock climbing, the rope is actually used uh, to reduce the consequences of a fall. Uh, it's not used as a tow rope or a tow line, but rather just to uh, secure the climbers and in the event of a slip or a fall, you can arrest the fall with a minimum of consequences. And whenever climbers are going to be moving over an exposed uh, place, uh, you must belay, that, belay them, that is, secure the movement of each climber. Uh, so we sit on down here uh, in a sitting hip belay, passing the rope around the body, getting it all set, and then the leader takes off on up the uh, rock face. Uh, no place uh, in our practice area is uh, one very far off the ground. It's easiest for demonstration purposes and instructional purposes to uh, have the team right close to you at all times. And nice and smooth, Dan moves on up the slope uh, where he will, when he gets to the top, uh, put on a sitting hip belay and bring up the rest of the climbers. Notice the nice, smooth, balanced climbing. Looking on ahead, moving smoothly along, putting the feet securely in little niches in the rock, good balance. And when he gets up, he yells down, belay off, and proceeds to bring in the slack rope before putting on the belay for a lower climber. Brings it all on in because the lead was not too great. 
Well, this business of blaying is very important in climbing, not only rock climbing, but also snow climbing. I think that if we kind of demonstrate just a minute what blaying is, we say pass for purposes of demonstration, the rope around the tree like this, uh, and pass it around entirely once. And then uh, if you give a jerk on this, uh, just with a single hand, you can easily hold uh, someone jumping or pulling on the other end. And the belay is simply that. You pass the rope from the climber, the person doing the climbing, around the body, and sitting in a position where you can brace the legs and get the feet on out, the knees are straight uh, so that you don't buckle here. They're placed against secure rocks uh, on a ledge. And then sitting here, uh, you play out the rope or bring it on in as the climber moves along. The right hand, in this case, is called the feeling hand. The left hand over here is called the breaking hand. And the breaking hand never leaves the rope. As the rope is brought on in, it is always on the rope so that in the event of a fall, you can come on across, brace with the what was the feeling hand out on a rock or a tree or a little ledge, and brace as you stop the fall, secure the climber from falling. And you'd use what's called a static or resilient belay to do this. It's a very simple method. And as the climber moves along, he may test this first. And when he's all set here, you yell down, uh, uh, belay on, and the climber below will respond by saying, uh, testing, and he'll test this situation to see whether you can hold him or not. Uh, let's join our, our group down below then uh, in this type of situation. Uh, Dan will pass the rope around his body in a sitting hip belay then uh, get in a secure position where he can stretch his legs on out and lock his knees. And he will, of course, use a belaying glove, any type of a mitten or leather glove to uh, have on both hands, uh, particularly the feeling hand and the, and the breaking hand. This is the feeling hand and the breaking hand uh, will come around the body and secure the rope uh, as the person below climbs or falls, whatever the case may be. The rope uh, moves out from the body so that the pull uh, comes directly in the middle between the legs uh, so that you're kind of pulling down in a tripod type of position. The left hand is placed out so that it braces as the fall occurs. The rope uh, is passed out, cut down through the middle of the body, and goes down to the lower climber. This is the breaking hand. It comes on across as the ball occurs. The other hand goes out and braces. The knees are locked, and when you pull on this, it uh, will hold the climber. He brings the rope on in with his feeling hand, never letting loose with the breaking hand. Feeling hand pulls in, the breaking hand pulls the slack rope in, uh, catches it on the forefinger so that the breaking hand never leaves the climbing rope as the climber below slowly progresses upwards. A blaze all set now, he's got the slack rope in, he yells, blay on, and so we follow the rope on down below where uh, Cindy will climb on up the slope. But first, she's going to test it to uh, make sure it's OK. So she yells testing and then jumps on the rope a few times to see whether Dan comes sailing down or not. Now she feels it's so secure, so uh, she'll take off then. But the others are standing right below and uh, a little worried that in case some rocks come down, they might get hit, so she chases them off to the side. Now she's all set, so uh, she'll yell uh, climbing and up she'll uh, come up the rock uh, pitch. And as she moves on up, Dan takes in the rope uh, very slowly, uh, just allowing a little bit of slack so he's not pulling on her as he moves along. This is where balance climbing is so important as you're moving uh, down along the uh, slope. Uh, keep your weight well out away from your, uh, from your feet so that the pressure 
uh, is against the rock, so you're not hugging the rock real close. The Brahmanis or lug soles will do a pretty good job of gripping the rock and provide a lot of friction. Weight kept well on out and you move smoothly up the rock in, in good balance, uh, looking on ahead with your eyes, making sure you know where you're going, climbing along slowly using the various types of climbing holds, the cling holds and pressure holds, and using little nobbins. It's very important to use your fingertips in climbing. Uh, even though you may have a big cling hold here, that a lot of pressure in the tips of the fingers, so you secure just the fingertips on many of these holds. Move along, and particularly uh, finding a good place for your feet, because most of the weight in climbing is going to be uh, over your feet. A real nice, slow, uh, rhythmical motion here. Uh, Cindy's on up, so then Ted will uh, uh, join the group on up uh, higher. And he tests out the belay situation, too, he thinks it's okay, so he yells climbing and proceeds on up. Uh, testing his holds as he moves, making sure that uh, the holds are good. Real nice, smooth motion as he moves along. Being real careful to get good footholds, keeping his weight well out from the rock as he moves along, using the little cling holds, nice balance where he's always secure, he can move down or up, it doesn't matter. Using three point suspension, that is always having uh, three points of the body in contact with a rock, one uh, foot or two feet and an arm. And up above, Doris blazes him on up. He moves smoothly along. And there he is uh, joining the group on above. Well, there is a more of a problem now uh, in belaying the leader. Because the leader, the person going on up first, when he falls, uh, this type of belay is not going to work as well in that if he's 10 feet above you, uh, he'll fall 10 feet below you before you feel him being the belayer. So in this case, you need a different type of belay, a dynamic belay. When the leader falls, you allow some more rope to slip on out. And if he falls a total distance of 20 feet, you may allow, say, uh, another five or six feet of rope to play on out as he falls. And this, plus the stretch of the nylon rope, and the nylon rope will, will stretch about 30% uh, of its normal length, that, plus the dynamic belay allowing this rope to run, will gradually bring the climber to a stop. In the uh, anchoring belays, uh, it's best to uh, put the blayer down in a position where you can uh, anchor him to the uh, rock here. And to do this, usually you'll use little uh, pitons, metal spikes uh, driven into the rock. Uh, taking a hammer, you'll uh, set these little piton, a little metal spike, uh, two or three inches along, uh, into the crack. And as it's driven in, uh, the metal will wedge on in and will hold anywhere between 400 and 2,000 pounds uh, or more, depending on the crack and the piton and the direction of pull. It's driven on into the rock securely, all the way in, right down as far as you can drive it. And you can tell by the ring of the piton uh, how good it is. And then into this, you pass the snap link or carabiner, uh, always down and out so that it hangs freely and you can pass a rope through it. Now, in this particular situation, there's not a good place for the blayer to sit. Uh, no tree nearby, no good rocks to sit behind. And so in this case, uh, you take and secure yourself to the piton behind. So Cindy takes the rope directly from her waist, puts a overhand knot in it, and passes it back to, through the carabiner, just snapping it in, so that now uh, she, being the belayer, the second man on the rope, is anchored in securely. And she moves on out so that she is pulling directly on the piton. She's tied right in there, and it would take a pretty hefty pull to pull the piton and her off of the ledge. And in this particular position now, she'll be in 
a good, con a good uh, position to stop the leader in a fall using a dynamic belay. The rope is passed around behind her and she sits in this sitting hip uh, position. And Dan uh, climbs on upwards. And as uh, he does, he plays out the rope. The climbing rope passes over the anchor rope so that it will not slip beneath the body uh, in the event of a fall uh, coming from below. And she can now execute the dynamic belay.